There is no single test that can be used to determine if a person has MS. Physicians must rule out other disorders. In a patient whose symptoms may suggest MS, the disease is usually diagnosed through a combination of methods that may include a patient's medical history, a neurologic exam, and the following tests. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is the best way to find the scarring, also called lesions, caused by MS. When used with a contrast eye, an MRI can also help to tell the difference between old lesions and those that are new or active. Thus, an MRI helps doctors to diagnose MS as well as track its progression. Evoked potentials, or EPs, may be used to analyze the time it takes for your nervous system to respond to stimulation of the senses, such as sight or sound. If the myelin and nerve fibers in your central nervous system have been damaged, your response times may slow down. For example, visual evoked potentials can pick up a delay in electrical nerve activity along the visual pathways from the eyes to the brain. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis from a spinal tap or lumbar puncture is a procedure that removes spinal fluid from the spinal canal. Analysis of this fluid detects cellular and chemical abnormalities associated with MS, such as increased numbers of white blood cells and protein. Physicians can also identify the presence of oligoclonal bands, which are characteristic of MS. Because each of these tests may be inaccurate when given alone, they are often performed in combination to help diagnose MS and to rule out other possible conditions with similar symptoms. Although there is no cure for MS, medications are available that can reduce the disease's activity for many people with relapsing forms of the disease. You will learn more about one of these medications in later chapters of this program. Rehabilitation is an important part of health care for people at all stages of MS, regardless of any other treatments they may be receiving. Rehabilitation programs are designed to help you perform tasks effectively and safely at home and at work. They may address problems with movement, speech, swallowing, memory, and other brain functions. Exacerbations, or flare-ups of MS, are unpredictable and may last from a few days to several months. In some cases, they are mild, but they may also be severe enough to interfere with a person's ability to perform tasks at home or at work. High-dose corticosteroids may be prescribed during attacks to help reduce the inflammation. As I mentioned earlier, symptoms of MS are different from person to person depending on where lesions are located and they may change over time for each patient. The good news is a combination of medication, self-care techniques, and rehabilitation may help manage the symptoms of MS.